Hi, welcome in or welcome back. My name is Ro. I'm a project manager, content creator, and healthy productivity fanatic. As you know, on this channel, I love to talk about how tools should fit your brain and not the other way around. Everyone thinks differently. And on this channel, I love to find tools that enable that. In today's video, I'd love to share with you a brand new tool called Scrintle, who are also very kindly sponsoring today's video. Think of Scrintle as the ideal brainstorm companion, a playground for the mind, one could say. It's an app that is extremely easy to use and allows a lot of room for creativity. I would love to show you today how I use Scrintle to plan out an entire YouTube video for this channel. I'll walk you through every step that I normally take when creating a YouTube video, and I'll show you how Scrintle actually helped me in making sense what was going on in my brain and put it to paper. You could see this as a nice peek behind the scenes in my content creation, as well as an introduction to a wonderful new tool. Without further ado, let's actually dive right into it, and I'm going to show you around in Scrintle. So welcome to Scrintle. This is it. This is an entire YouTube video visualized in one board. And I would love to share with you what you can see on this board, how I visualized my entire thought process for a YouTube video and kind of walk you through all the features of Scrintle with that. As you can see immediately, Scrintle is a very nice visual tool. It immediately helps you not only put things to paper in terms of text and writing down what you think, but organizing it in a way that visually makes sense to you. Personally, my first thought when seeing Scrintle was that it looks like a bullet journal, but then without the restrictions of it being a physical journal that you can make mistakes in and then having to start over, but you actually have the freedom to move things around so that as your thoughts progress, you can kind of reorganize the information in a way that makes sense for you. Another thing that I immediately noticed is that the interface of Scrintle is extremely easy to understand. There's not a lot of bells and whistles. There's not many buttons going on. It's actually very easy to find your way around Scrintle. So when you open Scrintle, there is actually a little sidebar over here that you can also close if you want to work in a more focused space. Then below at the bottom, there is one bar that includes all the tools that you need to build your own board. And I'll actually walk you through some of the coolest things in that bar because there's some pretty cool things down here that allow you to go on to like different levels of complexity with the things that you want to write down to make sure that you're not using something that can get extremely detailed. Like you can see on my backlog when you're just trying to make a header for something. So that's really nice about Scrintle that they offer all of these different varieties of things that you can add to a board. And I'd love to show you which ones there are. Important to know is there's basically two tools that you'll mostly be switching between. You you have the select tool, which allows you to select elements on your board so that you can actually move things around. And then you have the drag tool, which allows you to basically just move around on your board without accidentally grabbing things and moving them around. Yet another one of those things that just makes it really intuitive to use from the get go. So let me walk you through how I make a video and then kind of talk you through anything that you can see on the board as well. I'll make sure to use the select tool for now because that allows me to also kind of showcase all the different parts of the board. So what I started to do when I made this board is I started to write down some headers of like the different moving parts that I have to keep into account when I'm making a video. So first and foremost, I have who is sponsoring today's video, which of course is Scrintle. Then something that I write down is the video concept. The most important thing for me with a video concept is that when I read that, I want to be able to know what I'm talking about. That doesn't mean I have to write an entire script or I have to have the perfect title, but that for me needs to be strong enough to read it and be like, oh, Oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to do with that video. That's kind of like the direction that I wanted to take it into because it allows me quickly to know what I'm talking about on this board. As you can see, I used a couple of different things here. I used a little quote and some bullet points. So what you can basically do, you can add a block. That's what they use as a term for like all the building blocks. If you don't want to just add an empty block, because basically if you do plus on the block thing, it will just add a text block. That's it. You can easily remove it with a little remove or backspace, but you can also go here and you can say create a new block and then you can add it. And as you can see, it like kind of snaps to things, which is very nice because that can make that you can easily snap it to this and then move this as a whole. So that allows you to also kind of make connections within your information so that you can bump bundle it and then move it at the same time, which again is one of those features that it might sound small. If you're trying to organize large amounts of information that are stored in your brain, it is very nice to be able to kind of bundle it and just move it out of the way if you don't need it for now. You can also draw connectors. That's something that you'll see over here with the arrows. I'll show you that in a little bit more. You can create a new doc. So you both have blocks and docs. I know that's going to get confusing if I say it too often, especially for me, I will stumble over my words. But a doc is basically the thing that you'll see on my Kanban board, which is a 
card that it has a little bit more detail on it. I'll show you on the Kanban board exactly what that will look like later. But just so you know the controls at the at the bottom below, you have a block, a connector, and a dock. And then you can create a new board. So what you can see here is a board. And then from there, you can like create a new one immediately. And also there is a button that says plus, which is all blocks. So I know it says create a new block. Again, if you click this, it'll just add a text block, but that's not the only block we have in Scrintle. If you go over here, you can actually see text, a new doc as well. You can create a new board, web links, task list, bullet list, ordered list, images, and so on and so on. So there's like plenty of things here that allow you to customize your board. This is just the quick button to add a new text block basically, but from there you can get real creative and you can kind of see what happens here if I add a little heading and then you have a, a quote and then you have some bullet points, which kind of allows me to organize that information in a way that makes sense for me. So what I do is I, as soon as I have the sponsor and the video concept, I kind of start to look into other videos that inspire me. This can be things like videos within the same niche. This can be things that are themes that are connecting to it, maybe other reviews of the same tool, or this can just be videos that I watched where I really like the editing style, or there was something in there that I kind of want to take as the foundation or the inspiration. As you can see, it is a YouTube link over here. So if I actually click on this, I'll be able to click on the YouTube link and it will immediately open that video. And one of my favorite things in Scrintle is that let's say I'm watching this video and want to take notes and I want to make sure that it's immediately on my board. What I can do is I can actually create a little document. You could see this as a page in a notebook and then I can make sure that I actually link this to each other. So I can go like this. Now there's a little arrow. So I know that these two are connected to each other and this I can write notes from YouTube video. And then maybe I can write, I really like the editing style of this video. And then like, I know why I put it on the board and what the reason was that I want to reference to this. And that allows me to keep all the information in one place while still kind of organizing it in a way that it doesn't get too cluttered. Also, this seems like a very small note. You can actually either show it in different displays so you can do a full snippet or compact. If I do a compact, it actually hides a lot more. So if you end up with a lot of nodes around your board, you can actually organize it a bit better. And if you open it, it will open like this. So you'll have more space to write and it will actually be a little bit easier on the eye. And you can even click over here and then it will open as a full page page, giving you a completely distraction free space for you to work in and just write your thoughts down. So once I've actually selected some videos that inspire me and that I've taken some like good notes on and they're all linked over here, that's the moment where I also start thinking about, okay, so what do I want to put in the video? What is the contents that I want to have in there? These are just some tools that came to mind when I first started creating this video. As you can see, these are all hyperlinks and it immediately grabs this like nice little image and the title. So it's also very visual for me to see which tools I use or which tools I want to use in this video. And then once I have that and I have like basically the sponsor, the video concept, all of the things that I want to put into the video and all of the videos that inspire me, I go to the next step and that is the thumbnail ideas. For this, what I literally do is I go into the same niche of the tool that I'm researching or maybe the thing that I'm, or like the topic of my video and I will type that into the search bar and then I will just take screenshots of thumbnails that really inspire me, thumbnails that stand out to me and then I will put it on the board and what I tried here is to make connections that kind of allowed me to make sense of why I like those apps. So for instance, I really like this guy being in the center with the apps flying around. And then you kind of can see the same over here from Ali Abdal's thumbnail, where he also has all the apps around and he's in the middle of the thumbnail. You have the same over here. He's in the middle of the thumbnail, but the apps are not really flying around. They're like a little bit more neatly organized. And there's also some text in there. So that's a nice example. Then if you go from the flying apps, you can also see that there is a version that doesn't have a person in it, but just a phone, which is again, it's it's pretty clear it has a title in it too. And then I have one in the middle that's just the phone. It, it's almost like conceptual. You don't really know what is this video about. So, but it links to this one where there's no person and only a phone. And then also we have this one, which is very similar to this, but just a different style. And then I kind of tried to connect them to showcase like what did my thought pattern recognize in all of these things? And what are the elements that I want to take from this basically? Something that I really like to do is I like to, whenever I have a video idea, I want to go in and make the thumbnail and the title before I even write the script because I feel like making a title and a thumbnail is going to give a lot of directions to where I want to go with the script and 
basically helps me boil down the essence of the video before I even start writing or before I even start filming. Once I have everything over here figured out and I have like my all of my ideas and my notes and basically all the research done, that is the moment where I will go into the Kanban board. Although technically creating a mood board is also on my Kanban board, but um, that is already done. So at this point, that's done. I have my board ready. And the nicest thing about this Kanban board is not something that I created. You can actually go into the template library or in your own library. So you can save your own templates and then find from your library. I actually don't have templates saved to my library yet, so I cannot get something from my own library. But the nice thing is that you can explore templates that they have already made for you. You can make a task list, a mind map, a daily note, a meeting note. And as you can see, there is also a Kanban board here. And as soon as you click it, you will get an empty version of this board. This is so nice for your workflow because it makes it just so much easier to use a tool when they have already templates on board for you to just get going. That means you don't have to figure out how to make all the columns and make it pretty. You can just click it and start using it right away. As you see, I have something on my backlog, which is basically a task that I only use whenever I actually have to send something over to a sponsor for review. But this is an optional task, so this doesn't happen with every YouTube video. But once I've created a mood board, I actually start writing the script. So that task is currently in progress. If I want to move it, I can actually get it over here and then I can move it to done like this. So let's say that I've actually written the script. Then the next task would be for me to go and record the A roll. So I can move that over and then everything will just move with it. That's very nice. For anyone wondering, A roll is basically where I'm just talking to you guys. That's just me recording the very basic footage of the video. And then if I have any B roll, so if I want to have like an overlay over me talking where you actually can see the app or if there's any logos I want to put on the screen, sometimes I have to record for that. That's what we call B roll. I always make sure to first record my A roll, edit that down, and then make sure to place little markers in my video so I know where I want to place B roll footage. I know that a lot of creators think about their A-roll and their B-roll beforehand, but I personally prefer to just do the entire video and then from there kind of see what spaces in the video need a little bit more spice, if that makes any sense. So then I record my B-roll. Um, then I actually, I just noticed that editing the rough cut is usually before recording the B-roll. So then we do the rough cut, we do the B-roll, and then I do the final edit. And then sometimes in between these things, I actually have to send the review. So I can also put this maybe like after the rough cut, I already have to send it to review to someone so I can just drop it in between. And that's it. That's my process for creating a YouTube video. And this was so incredibly easy to do with Scrintle because it was a really like no BS situation. I didn't have to learn how to onboard a tool. It didn't take a lot of time, but I still got to utilize the power of like templates and visualization for my brain to translate that YouTube idea concept to paper so I could then make it more easily. A couple of other things that I'd like to mention about Scrintle is that I do actually have a tag system. So if you end up making a ton of boards in your space and you want to make sure that you can organize that a little bit better. You can actually assign tags and then you can see all of the things with certain tags in here. So let's say that you use boards for your work and you use boards for your content. You can separate those very easily in here. And then you can also scroll through your boards and through your docs over here. So the thing that I showed you earlier where these like things, these cards where you can add a lot more information that you can also open as like a full separate page. This is called a doc. You can actually open those in a separate list so you can more easily find maybe a note that you put somewhere in a board and you actually know the title. You don't have to go all the way through all the steps of opening that board and then finding that thing. You can actually way more easily just find it through here as well. And I think with that, that covers everything I wanted to show you guys about Scrintle. Scrintle is a great tool for people that are looking to organize their mind, whether it be for productivity, creativity, or a combination of the two. If you've tried many apps and you usually feel overwhelmed or they're too complicated, then Scrintle might actually be the one that you're looking for. It is straightforward and it delivers exactly what it promises, a playground for the mind. Does Scrintle sound like something you're interested in? Make sure to check out all their information in my description box and in my pinned comment down below. And if you do end up using the tool, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I always encourage you guys to talk about whatever productivity tools you're using, but the upside to downsides, your findings, etc., is of all the tools that I cover on this channel. So feel free to hop in there and tell me your thoughts because I'd love to talk with you about it. And if this is the first video that you're seeing on my channel and you're interested in seeing more content about healthy productivity, lifestyle, content creation, all of those things, feel free to hit that subscribe button and notification bell and check out all the other videos on my channel because I already have a bunch that might interest you as well. And if this video was helpful to you, please do toss it a cheeky like. And with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye everyone.